Cassius. Jedi Exile. Chapter 7 Liara stumbled over a few tall rocks and through tall patches of grass. She didn't know where she was going. All she knew was that she had to keep going straight. She was tired and hungry. She missed her bed and her toys. But something compelled her to keep going. Soon, however, she found herself lost. Nothing around her but empty fields and gray skies. She sat down and pulled grass from the ground, anxiously trying to work out what to do in her mind. She got up and dusted herself off before walking forward, coming upon a large flat pile of twigs and sticks. Thinking nothing of it, she walked over it, only for the sticks to give way and send her tumbling painfully down into an empty dirt pit. As she yelped in pain and held her ankle, she looked around her and saw no way out of the pit, as she tried climbing the dirt walls, only for the clumps of dirt to break free and send her falling back down. Help! Anybody? From up above, she heard voices. Hello? Please help! I'm stuck! Of course you're stuck. A tall Twi'lek stepped over, twirling one of his leku. What's a young lady like you doing out here all alone? None of your business, stupid! Ooh! Feisty. Well, we'll soon cure you of that. Two more Twi'leks walked over, holding shock spears, as Liara looked in fear. Who are you? Businessmen. Our business? Ransoming off spoiled brats like you, for very high profit. You have a mother, don't you? A father? Imagine how much they'll pay to get their precious baby back. I'm not going anywhere with you. Ooh, scary. Boys, show her how we discipline children around here. The two guards dropped into the pit and activated their shock spears as Liara began to hurl rocks at them, only making them angrier as one of them thrust their spear into her side, painfully shocking her as she screamed and writhed in pain. As she collapsed, one of them tied a rope to her wrist and tossed the end back up to the leader. I do love children. So naive. Tofa, she's secure. Pull her up. Tofa began to hoist on the rope when suddenly he felt a tapping on his shoulder, turning around as Cassius slammed his fist across his cheek, knocking him to the floor. Grabbing the rope, Cassius pulled Liara to him as the guards tried to climb up. Setting Liara aside, Cassius saw Tofa get up and join his men as they circled him, weapons ready. I'm guessing you are as a father then? I'm giving you one chance to walk away and never come back. Tofa laughed and pulled out a vibro sword, gently appraising the razor sharp tip. Not an option, I'm afraid. But I wouldn't expect a farmer to understand the intricacies of our line of work. Kidnapping children? Not what I'd call a respectable profession. Well, to each his own, I suppose. One of Tofa's men rushed at Cassius, who evaded the tip of the spear, grabbing it and hurling him through the air to the ground, blocking an attack from the other and striking him across the face with the tip of the spear, knocking him down. Tofa glared at Cassius, who held the shock spear in front of him. I'll have you know, I'm an expert in one-on-one -on -one combat, my friend. Challenging me will be the last mistake you ever make. Prove it. Tofa elegantly flipped forward and struck at Cassius several times in quick succession as he blocked every attack, quickly stepping back to avoid a close stab to his face, before catching Tofa's blade in a bind and sending it flying from his hands. Cassius held the tip of the spear to Tofa's neck as the Twi'lek raised his hands in the air. Expert, you say? Using the back end of the spear, Cassius knocked one of Tofa's feet out from under him and sent him falling back painfully into the pit. Could have fooled me. The two guards got up and rushed at Cassius, who raised an eyebrow and used the spear to easily trip both of them into the pit as they landed painfully on top of Tosa. Running to Liara, Cassius untied her and put her into his speeder, checking her pulse. She was alive, just stunned. Tofa and his men began to crawl from the pit as Cassius sped off with Liara, 
leaving the Twi'leks screaming and cursing as they sped away. Cassius breathed a sigh of relief. As soon as they were clear out of sight from the kidnappers, he pulled to a stop and checked on Liara, gently lifting her head up. Liara. Liara, wake up. Liara stirred as her eyes opened in shock as she backed away from Cassius. What are you doing here? Liara, easy. You're safe now. That's not what my mom said. She says you're bad. Your mom told me you ran off. That's why I'm out here. How do I know you're telling the truth? Cassius sighed and looked at her. She was obviously terrified. Looking at her side, he could see she had a nasty mark from the shock spear. Does that hurt? Liara looked down and kept her distance. A little. Let me see. Liara backed away as Cassius held up his hand. Liara, I give you my word. I won't hurt you. I just want to make sure you're okay. Liara looked at Cassius and slowly moved closer as he inspected the mark. Wait here a moment. Hopping out of the speeder, Cassius grabbed a kit of medical supplies from the back and pulled out a large bandage. Here, lift your arms. Liara carefully lifted her arms, exposing the wound to Cassius, who carefully applied the bandage. Better? I think so. Cassius sat beside her and looked down. I know why you're so distrustful. But I'm not here to cause you any trouble. I don't think we've been properly introduced. I'm Cassius. Cassius held out his hand as Liara carefully shook it, noticing the metal arm peeking out from beneath his gloved hand. What happened there? Cassius looked at his arm and back to Liara. I had an accident. A long time ago. And lost it. What kind of accident? It's not important now. What's important is that I get you home safely to your mother. She's gonna be mad. I think she'll just be happy you're safe. You mean the world to her. Liara smiled a bit as Cassius put his hand on her shoulder. Looking down, he saw her remove the blue cube from her pocket. Where did you get that anyway? I don't remember. Mom said I got it when I was little. Do you like it? Mm-hmm. It makes me feel safe. Liara looked over and saw Sarah's braid around Cassius' neck. What's that? Cassius held the braid and softly smiled. This is what makes me feel safe. Like someone is watching out for me. Even when I'm alone. Who gave it to you? Someone I loved. Let's get you home. Okay. Cassius drove the speeder forward as they made their way to town, where Kala ran from the crowd over to Liara and held her tightly. Liara, where were you? We've been worried sick. I'm sorry, Mom. But Mr. Cassius saved me. There were bad men and everything. Kala looked at Cassius with concern. I found her in the outskirts. She ran into a few unsavory folk. They've been dealt with. Non-lethally, if you're wondering. And Liara is safe. Kala looked at the mark on Liara's side. Is she hurt? Just a minor wound. She'll be alright, Kala. Sabo came by soon after and saw Cassius. Where in the blue hell did you run off to? I had to do a little soul-searching. Everything's alright now. You're becoming more trouble than you're worth, you know that? Maybe. But you still need someone with a good back to do the heavy lifting, don't you? Sabo shook his head and sighed as Kala walked over. Sabo, keep an eye on Liara. I need to talk to Cassius. Sabo nodded and walked over to Liara as Kala took Cassius aside. Thank you for saving her. You don't have to thank me. I just did what anyone in my position should. Do you know why she was out that far? Cassius looked over at Liara. Because she was trying to find me. Cassius, I don't... Kala. You need to know this. Liara is strong with the Force. 
but she knows nothing about it. Force-sensitive beings are drawn to each other naturally. It's almost like a magnetic force. Before long, she's going to discover her abilities on her own. She needs to know how to control them. I don't want that life for her, Cassius. I know. I don't either. Our kind aren't safe anymore. I don't know if we ever will be. But without guidance, she'll be found out sooner or later. I'm not asking to train her. Only to teach her what she needs to know to control her power. Kala looked down. I... I need time to think it over. I'll talk to you when I've made my decision. Cassius nodded as Kala walked over to Liara and picked her up to take her home. Cassius knew in his heart that Liara needed training. But how could they accomplish that without drawing attention? On an Imperial starship across the galaxy, a dark figure sat in her chair, looking upon a hologram of Darth Vader. Shara, my spies bring news of an informant who possesses word of a Jedi in the Outer Rim. Head to Iridonia and find this informant. If his word proves true, then find the Jedi and eliminate them. Should you succeed, your training will be complete, and you will secure your position amongst the Inquisitors. Can I entrust you with such a task? Yes, Lord Vader. I shall find this wayward Jedi and bring him to justice. Do not fail me. Return victorious, or suffer the consequences of your failure. I will prove myself, my lord. I will not fail. The hologram ended as the devious Shara stood and smiled.